Hi and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Soph and I am a Cambridge University offer holder. So um, here are some things that I wish I'd known before starting year 12 and in my A-levels. So first of all, I wish I'd known that it's nothing like as bad as everyone makes it out to be. I'd spoken to so many people who were like, it's awful and it's unbearable and it's just so difficult and it's such a step up from GCSE and whilst it was a step up it was nothing like as bad as everyone was making it out to be like I got so worried that I was like gonna die in sick form and that was just completely not the case at all um I still love my subjects um at the end and actually Year 12 and 13 were probably my best years at school, so that's very different to kind of how I'd imagined it based off what other people had said. Um, and continuing on from that, yes, you do have to work hard, but that doesn't mean that you need to give up like everything else that you do. You can find the time to do things that you like, and you should do that because... Otherwise, let's be honest, you're just going to burn out. So that is something that you should prioritise. Um, honestly, um, you should be doing about eight hours of work a day. So that includes all of your lessons at school. You should be sleeping for about eight hours. And then you've got eight hours left to do whatever you want. Now, OK, that does have to include things like lunch at school, travelling to and from school and things like that. But even still, that is still quite a lot of time that you've got to do whatever it is that you like. The next thing I wish I'd known is that it's okay to do four subjects. Um, so many people said, oh, don't do four. Even like my head of sick form was like, no, four is too much. It's too much. But actually, I definitely think it was the right decision for me. First of all, my offer from Cambridge is based on four A-levels. And if I didn't do four, I, so I probably would have dropped either chemistry or further maths after AS. But then I feel like because I loved them so much, I would have just spent that time learning what I would have learned in the lesson anyway. So I may as well have taken them. And honestly, I have no regrets with taking four. Um... I like to stay busy so four certainly kept me busy and if I could do it again I would do the exact same thing because honestly I found it quite fun like learning about these subjects that I love and seeing how much my teachers clearly loved them too because like they've gone to uni and studied it and then they were like imparting what they knew onto us and I just found it really cool because at GCSE you're learning like the basics and then, I mean, A-level is advanced level, so it's not easy, which I found really cool. Um, also, teachers don't treat you like kids anymore. Um, so, yeah, like, they are still, like, above you, and, like, there is still kind of a little bit of a kind of hierarchy, I suppose you could say, but it's not the same as when you're doing your GCSEs where it's very much, I'm the teacher, you are the student, sit down and do as I tell you to there's a little bit more room for discussion um so like do you feel like you need more practice on this and then you can say like yes or no whereas at GCSE they'd kind of make that decision for you um but that being said there will be people in your class who don't want to work and it's really easy to get distracted by them but that is like the worst thing that you can do I remember in GCSE science, we weren't sat, so we had a massive range of abilities in there. And there were people like me who loved science, and then there were other people that were just trying to pass so that they could drop it as soon as possible. And I thought when I moved on to A-level that there wouldn't be people who had that kind of attitude where they didn't really care. But um, unfortunately, there was. Um, but yeah, the key is just to try not to get distracted by them, because that's just going to hurt you in the long run. Um, also, you're going to spend a lot of time with the same people, especially if you do subjects like me where they're all very related. So I did maths, further maths, physics and chemistry. 
and obviously most people that do further maths also do physics and then you can't do further maths without doing maths so there were some of us that had all or three quarters of our lessons if they were doing four together so you really don't get away from those people and then if you also have freeze at the same time as them you literally spend all day every day with them which if you like them is great um if you don't that's a bit awkward so if there are people who are in like all of your lessons definitely try and make friends with them because it is just awkward otherwise especially if you need to ask them about say homework or you can't remember where your next lesson is um and then you go talk to them and you've never really spoken to them before that's just really awkward so go talk to them make friends and you'll be fine um don't be afraid to make mistakes so if you're having a class discussion or the teacher asks a question don't be afraid to put your hand up and answer because it's like it's the teachers then focusing on you um, and giving you feedback on the answer that you've given so that's like really beneficial especially if you're not sure which is when a lot of people would shy away because like oh I don't want to say the wrong thing but if you're not sure say it and then the teacher can pick out any mistakes there and then rather than you sitting there not being sure and then it coming out in a homework whereas you could have fixed that in the lesson and honestly people don't care that much like they you might if you've got some not particularly nice people in your class like you might get a snigger at most but honestly like in half an hour's time they're not even going to remember so does it matter no not at all like you are human like you're going to make mistakes and that's completely fine um some tests that you do are going to go really badly and that's okay as long as you learn from it like even the smartest kid in your class is going to have the odd test where they do dreadfully. But the thing is, they're not going to go scream about that like they would if they'd done really well. So most people don't know and then they think that those people are doing well all the time and that's just completely not true. If you're struggling, either everyone else or a lot of other people probably are too. So don't worry about it. Obviously try and improve but don't sit there panicking being like I'm never gonna get good at this like it's the end of the world because it's definitely not I remember talking to one of the guys in my class and he was like oh I'm really struggling with this topic and I turned around and I was like yeah actually I think it's the hardest thing that we've done so far and he was so surprised and I was like why are you so surprised And he was like because you seem like you have it so together and I'm like no <laughs> Like, I find some topics harder than others too. Like, I'm human too. I think it's easy to forget that we're all in the same boat. Like, there is no, like, superhuman in your class. Like, everyone's the same. Um, I mean, if you are struggling, then that is definitely something that you could talk to a teacher about, see if they might be able to give you, like, an extra lesson just to get you up to speed. Um, the next thing is to file all the paper that you get given away, straight away. The number of pieces of paper that my friends lost because they didn't file them away and they just had a notepad where they just shoved it in is unbelievable. File it away, straight away. Don't make excuses, just file it away. Um... If that means that you need to carry a hole punch in your bag, carry a hole punch or you will regret it, basically. Um, I used to use a free every so often just to go through my folders and just make sure that they were neat. I mean, I did file everything away, but somehow it just got a little bit messy sometimes. So I used to just use the occasional free to go through that and basically use your freeze productively because... There is no point sitting there messing around because you can do that at lunch or you can do that after school. But the opportunities that you've got there and then, like you've got access to all the textbooks, you've got access to other people doing the same subjects as you, 
you've got access to your teachers so you can go to their office if you need to and see if they're there and they can help you and also it's just I find that it's easier to focus at school than at home and you're literally being given an opportunity there so definitely make the most of it. Um, The next thing is that as much as teachers can seem annoying at times, they are trying their best. Like, they don't gain anything from making you miserable or giving you more work than you need to do. That's just more work for them because then they've got to, like, print it or mark it or give feedback on it. So why would they do that? If they've given you loads of work, it's because that's what they honestly think is best so as much as it seems annoying ultimately you've got to just do it I mean if it does seem really excessive then maybe go talk to someone but generally you just got to do it and the final thing which I did do but a lot of my friends didn't do is to do things to put on your personal statement throughout year 12. There are so many opportunities that come out in year 12, from taster days at unis to summer schools to seminars to work experience, all sorts of things. And if you do it as you go along during year 12, you will find writing your personal statement so much easier because you won't be trying to read some book at some extraordinary speed before the deadline on the 15th of January Um, and then if you get called to interview you haven't read it properly and then the interviewer is going to know that and basically it's a bit of a disaster so make sure that you've done a good bank of things throughout year 12 or even before as well and also make a note of them write down what you did what was good about it, what you learned from it, all of those kinds of things, so that when you write your personal statement, you can literally just look at that and you've got loads to write about and that will make it super easy. So hopefully this was helpful for anyone who is about to start their A-levels. These are just the things that I wish I'd known. Thank you for watching. Um, Don't forget to like and subscribe for more similar content. If you have any more video suggestions or things you'd like to see, then please feel free to leave them in the comments.